Hello, so today I'm going to be breaking down section 5 of the game manual, also known as the robot skills section, previously known as appendix B section. Um, because the video covering the entire game manual was really popular, I'll upload a section breaking down the VEXU rules in a couple of days probably. So the skill setup is different, just like it was for over under. Um, you can see right there, um, very different setup. You got two goals over there, three goals over there. All 24 of the red rings are used, 23 of them start on the field, one of them starts as a preload. Um, and then the blue rings, out of all 24 of those, only 10 of them are used um, because there are 10 goal stakes, although I'll get to that a little bit later because something's up with the rules and it's a little confusing. So yeah, different setup. Uh, rules are all mostly the same, um, unless previously noted in this section of the game manual, you can assume everything carries over. Um, also, all the skills fields will have to have the GPS strip installed. So this is the top-down starting view, which you can see. Also, this is a misprint because there are no red rings there. Um, if there were, there would be 27 rings, which they don't actually ship you. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and assume this one is correct, and that also says 24 red rings. This is 24 red rings. This one has 27 red rings. So just assume that those three rings are not there. Um, nothing too crazy with the setup, though. It looks symmetrical, which is nice, I guess. So a couple of things with robot skills. You have your driving skills. You have your autonomous coding skills, also known as prog skills, uh, robot skills match, and skill stop time still continues to be a thing. So yeah, as I said before, all the rules carry over unless explicitly stated otherwise. And if you break any rule violation that scores points, it's instantly considered match affecting because scoring extra points affects the outcome of your score. So DQs will be a lot more common in skills. Like if you possess three rings and go and score one, that's going to be a DQ unless you like go and retroactively de-score that by like taking the ring off the pole to show like, hey, we, we undid the illegal action. Um, yeah, robot skills, you cannot have more than three programming skills and three driving skills. Yeah, so you have to start the match in a legal position for the red alliance, which is over top of the red tape line. So you have to start somewhere hovering over that perimeter. You also cannot start touching one of those pre-placed pre rings or goals as per the normal starting rules. Um, you do get one preload, um, which is just the normal preload placement rules, and no blue preloads are used. So this is where things start to get really different. Um, teams may only utilize blue rings as top rings on stakes. So blue rings are kind of weird in the way that they're scored. So you, like I said, you only have 10 of them and there are conveniently are 10 stakes. So blue rings can only be count for points after all red rings in the match have been scored. So the blue rings are worth zero points unless every single red ring is scored which is going to be a huge frame for programming skills because if you miss a singular ring, all of a sudden all of your blue rings don't count. So that's the first thing. Then the second thing is at least one red ring is scored below the blue ring on the stake. So you can see that these goals, they start with one blue ring already on them. You are going to take that ring off, put a red ring underneath, and put the blue ring back on in order for them to count for points. Um, probably intentional just to make it a little bit harder. GDC doesn't want anyone maxing out the game. Now there can only be one blue ring on the stake. So you can't just have like two blue rings on top of a stake or else blue ring doesn't count. And then finally, where is that? Here we go. So no red rings are scored if they're above the blue ring. So you can't like put the blue ring, the blue ring starting ring and put some red rings on top. Doesn't count. Now the blue ring isn't scored. Now the one thing that I'm not sure about is the high stake because red rings cannot count for being the top ring and blue rings can't count as scored if there's not a red ring under them. So I'm guessing with the high stake, as written right now, it's impossible to get a high top ring on the high stake, which makes it worth one point, and you can only put a red ring up there. But considering that there's 10 stakes and there's 10 blue rings, I'm guessing that there will be an exception for that rule given in the, when the Q&A opens up. So I would plan on that happening. I would bet money that they'll say, hey, you put a blue ring up there, it counts as a top ring, or else they wouldn't have given you the extra ring. But that is something that could change. As with the last video, I'll try and have any changes in a pinned comment at the top of this video. Um, yeah, so red rings don't count as a top ring. You can't If you put them on top of a blue ring, they don't count for points. So yeah. And yeah, if you have something off with the goal like blue rings uh, beneath red rings or multiple blue rings or something, then no ring on the stake will earn points as a top ring. They can still get, your red rings I think can still get points for just being normal rings, 
like I was kind of mentioning with the high stake earlier, you can get a singular red ring up on the high stake and it counts for one point. Uh, Woohoo, good job. Then the other big change that comes with skills is the corners, the plus minus, there's no modifiers for those. Um, all they do is count as a five point zone. So even if you're a push bot, you can just push the goals into the corners and get a total of 20 points. And the same rules for if a goal is in the corner counts, so you can't have multiple goals in the same corner. So it's just 20 points max from pushing goals into the corner. I mean, those should be pretty easy points to get. All right, and then, yeah, skills fields are all supposed to be the same, but they don't have to be the same as the competition fields. Um, they don't have to have GPS strip. So yeah, here's your um, scoring table, if you want that for like your notebook or something. Uh, but it's all the stuff that I've already covered. Then skill stop time is still back, so you can tell the referee before the match, hey, we want to do skill stop time, and then they stop the match, uh, give you a tiebreaker thing, essentially. Um, and, or you can have the brain screen thing, but I haven't actually seen any tournaments do that. So then, uh, still, this all looks the same, tiebreakers. Your highest autonomous skills is the tiebreaker, then your second highest autonomous skills. And then... You can pull these up, but I've never seen those actually become relevant. And then Global Skills Challenge is, again, the same thing as it was before. Your highest overall autonomous skills, um, and then your stop times. And I haven't seen it really go past that, and you can pull up the rules if it's something really specific. Uh, leagues, you run skills at each league session, but you can't combine scores from different sessions. So that pretty much covers skills. Uh, seems pretty basic from a rule standpoint, other than the small thing with the blue rings. Definitely a couple errors on the GDC parts, they did not proofread this very well. I should have the VexU rolled up pretty soon, and I'm hoping to have a reveal video dropping on Thursday for the new game.